YouTube. Right, we have the UJ. I've got the holes in the UJ. I've got the bolts through the UJ, which fit quite nicely, to be honest. But I wanted to do something inside, and I thought about casting. And I thought about a uh, fiberglass resin cast, and I was told, don't. So I thought, fair enough. So looking at maybe a rubber. So I went to my various um, auto parts stores and stuff like that. Nobody knew anything about it. One said, in 20 years of me working here, nobody's ever asked. I went, well, you know, it's obvious. Anyway, so I went online, watched some YouTube videos. I saw a couple of mistakes in YouTube videos, which I'll point out later in this video. Uh, but basically, what we've got here is I saw somebody doing um, rubber mounts for car engines. And they were using 60 PU casting rubber, which comes in two parts. So we're going to use that today. Um, and so we're going to pop, get this ready for casting, and then we're going to cast it and see what happens. It needs to set for, it's set after an hour, but it needs 24 hours to set. I don't need it that hard. I just need it that if, if the holes are a little bit enlarged, the centre bit will stop it from basically vibrating when it's travelling along the road because it's slightly loose. So I don't have to keep it tight, torque tight. I just have to keep the, the, the thing straight, and that should solve a problem. Right, so let's get on with it. Right, I'm having noise issues. Right, so what I've done is I've set up in the corner of the garage that's not going to be accessed for the next 24 hours. That's how long it takes to set hard, but that's what we're working with. Um, I've got it as level as I can, so it's, it's as level as I can, so when we pour it should be flat. And so, anyway, we've got a mixing tub, we've got a stirring stick, we've got our two-part resin, rubber resin, UJ with the bolts already in. We've got olive oil and Play-Doh. Yes, Play-Doh. You'll see why in a bit. We also have Simone's Original Wax, which is made with natural carbonara wax. This is a releasing agent for the bolts. What I did is, I don't know if you can see that, I've coated the bolts with wax about eight or nine layers then I put it through and then I put a couple more layers using my finger like so just to put on another layer very very carefully I could have used a brush but I used my finger it, was, it just meant that I could feel where it is so this should be a releasing agent now the play-doh and you see I've already got a mold here this is for the excess so I'm not wasting it I've done something a little bit funny but it might work it might not but at least I'm not trying to waste it so I've got my play-doh I take a little bit of Play-Doh out of the tub. Just a nice big dollop. Don't need that much to be honest. Now I've already done it with this bit and made it prepped so it's ready for any excess or extra that's, that's created by this because I don't think I'm going to use all of it in one casting but I don't want it to be too little. So we roll our Play-Doh up and this is where the olive oil comes in. Now this is made with organic ingredients. I do believe it is... Contains wheat. So it's basically... It should, it should release quite well. But if I add a little bit of olive oil... Just take a little bit and then pour a little bit of olive oil in there. And then just squelch it all together. And that makes it very oily, very oily. Nice and squelchy. And then what you do is you place it on your tin or on your flat surface and just press down like so. Now I've seen people do this with super glue and cardboard and then have problems with it. I've seen people say use wax paper. Well this is pretty much the same thing. See if we can get all this out and we take our part and we place it on and squash down and that is sealed that will not leak right then so we've got a tub and it's, it's a particular shape so i can pour it in easily and so we take our resins this is the scary bit now i am wearing gloves because I'm told this stuff is nasty. I've got a minute to work with it once it's mixed, so we're going to pour the whole lot out. The whole lot. This is a 50 50 mix, and they're both exactly the same. And once 
this gets going, we've just got to go with it. Just pour as quickly as possible. So that's that one done. Here we go. Don't need that, not going to play with that. Pour it in, get it in there, get it all out. That should be plenty. Get it all out now. We've got to work with it quickly. No messing about. Do this in a well ventilated area. You can get different colours and everything, it's great. That should be very well mixed. It looks a uniform colour. That's the 12 cars go by. That's, that is setting already. Now we pour it in quickly. So let's just pour it in. Apparently we've got to be careful of bubbles. So when we pour it in, it doesn't matter to be honest. Nice and slowly. There. Give it a bang. Helps with releasing bubbles, but I'm happy with that, so I use the excess in here. Nice. Now that takes half. Uh, half. It starts setting within a minute. And takes half an hour to uh, an hour to, uh, no half an hour to set. Is it half an hour? Uh, Thirty minutes at room temperature to start to get to the set point. Then twenty four hours to fully cure, and then we can start releasing the bolts. And well, that's it. We'll see you in about twenty four hours. Right then. So it's actually pretty hard. It's spongy, but it's hard. As I said, this doesn't actually really matter. I think the the, the millimetre thickness of the metal. So yeah, um, yeah, there is some bubbling in there, but I think that's mostly on the surface. Um, it's pretty, yeah, spongy. If we take this, it's malleable, but it's it's hard. It could be doing a bit harder. Maybe a harder setting rubber would be better. As I said, it didn't matter. This is more of a thought of experiment than what it needs. I think the the meatiness of the metal will actually do the job. If you can see that meatiness of the metal that's three mil thick I don't think that's going to shift but all we've got to do now is take that out the plug I'll use my fingers oh it's malleable oh it's coming off that's come out really really well yeah, there's lots of bubbles in there by the looks of it as I said this is more of an experiment than it needed to be seems to be We do have air bubbles, so we've learnt something. We have air bubbles in there um, that we don't mix it as much as I did. I wanted to get a really good mix, and you don't need to. It's nice, slow, smooth stirring. As I said, it doesn't matter on this this particular part, but I just want to, it also protects the bolts. But I think that's actually really, 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 really hard. But it doesn't matter. We've got it out, so let's just give it a clean. Enough. A rag. Now the idea now is to get the bolts out. That's going to be fun. So just get the bolts out. Now these are two. This one's a broken one, so I bought a new one. And this one's actually quite old. I've got an idea for these, and I think it it will work. So they're slightly bent, if you see. But we'll just take the bolts off. You 
actually actually helps. You see a little bit's come through there, which is good. It sealed the hole. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. I'm not worried about that. That is why I put spacers. That's why I put washers on them. And I didn't do them too up tight. tight. I wonder if that will shift. There we go. Unstuck the bolt. Let's try and undo that one. Now you can feel here, here that it's become loose. But it's nice and tight. It's not, it's not going to wobble. That is not going to wobble at all. So what I've got to do now is get it out. Let's see if we can do a hand. Do this rubber mallet is hard rubber. And this is soft. That's a little platelet. You can actually see detail, but because it's bubbled, as I said, shouldn't have mixed it. We've learned something. You've learned something. I've learned something. So can we get this? No. And then what we do is we pack this full of grease and job done. That's come out really, really well. That's why you use old mallets. That's, I don't know if you can see that. That's actually come out really, really well. So you stick, basically when we take the bolts, stick some grease on there and that means that that will move. So if we stick grease on there, that's the part that'll move, not the bolt. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do this. Um, the idea that I've got for the UJ is to basically cut it off there, put that around there, and then the bolt does not move. That's the idea. So we weld this little bit up on the other, other part of the UJ. The bolt doesn't move. We can tighten it up with only one spanner, not two. And that means that once that's in place, and the only thing that moves is that, which is good. I'm really pleased with that. That's come out rather well. I'm going to neaten this up. I've got a way of neatening it up. I've actually got some overrun of this and just neaten it up. Possibly bring it to the top so I don't have to paint in here or I can do it. I can paint the outside or I may just leave it and just coat it in grease. So goodbye YouTube. See you next time. Have a good one.